Somehow, Ulysses Nardin manages to have both one of the most understated and classic designs of a watch and the freak. This Ulysses Nardin catalog has a very fine hardcover. It, well, has a fine texture to it. Fine meaning uh, small grained instead of fine, but it's also pretty fine. Has a more fabricy texture. Makes a nice noise, and it has a blue and gold theme, which is the color theme of this catalog, quite obviously. It even has a sort of yellow binding on there, which I find to be a very nice touch. Inside, the pages are glossy and nice and thick. So let's go through it. This is the 2015 catalog. Uh, so you'll see some watches that they don't have anymore. And you won't see some of the watches they do have now, but it is the 2015 catalog. This is a catalog I got from a boutique because they didn't have the new catalog, I guess. The catalog opens up with the Marine uh, collection of watches, which is their traditional collection. Oh, and by the way, in the preface, there's quite a bit of fluff, but the important stuff are that they served over 50 navies, won 4,300 awards, though only uh, 18 of them were gold medals. And then they have the greatest, though unspecified, number of patents. Back to the Marine collection. Their design for the Marine watch I find is, well, maybe not this one, let's find a nicer one. Uh, this more classic one. I think this is a very nice design for the dial. I'm not a huge fan of the lugs and the ridged bezel around, but I do like that design. I think it's classic, timeless, marine chronometer. That's what it is when you think of marine chronometer. And they did it. They did it right. The hands, I think, are wonderful and they fit together quite nicely. As I said, I'm not a huge fan of the case and the lugs, but what I'm a bigger unfan of is the uh, little bubble on the date wheel, which is at the six o'clock position and would be great, but they had to put a little, uh, a little magnifier that, well, I don't like it on Rolex, so I'll definitely not like it when it's this tiny little hindrance on an otherwise flat uh, crystal. I do not like that. We go through this marine chronometer and they have uh, the marine chronometer collection and they have quite a few uh, quite a few different mm, I don't know models or differences in design. They're probably the same movement, the same everything else, same case, same everything, but there's slightly different designs and you can find someone for everyone. Here again, a, a very nice classic uh, dial, classic design of a dial with a very nice chronograph. I do like those sub-dials with their... Uh, this looks like a pocket watch and I love pocket watches, so... I love that with the uh, uh, sort of train tracks around the sub-dials. Go through a couple of these. And now we have a diver watch with that same design, with that same bubble, except in a diver case. And you know what's the funny thing is I prefer this case to the previous. Of course, I don't like divers that much and would probably not get this and, well, this specific one. I'm not a huge fan of the gold and blue theme. It works well for the catalog, but I'm not sure about the watch. But then again, we see the other watches in this 
uh, lineup and the blue, red, and silver, maybe it looks worse than the blue, red, and gold. But I'm not sure. There are watches for a specific person, that person isn't me. Except, of course, this black sea with the red, which I find absolutely stunning. Of course, they had to put the bubble there. It's a bit big at 45.8 millimeters, which is, well, not just a bit big, but um, far too big. I love the color scheme, I love the details. This watch, it comes together perfectly. Some of these others maybe are a bit over the top with their details, see too many different colors, too many different things, but this, it's wonderful. Anyway, the next collection is the Functional Collection, which is an interesting name that they put there because uh, some of them, well, they're certainly functional and they're more complicated, but they're not exactly uh, as we see here with the El Toro, a little bit um, perhaps not the easiest to read or, well, functional. It has a lot of function though. This is sort of their lineup of their more uh, complicated watches without being, well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Black Toro, I actually prefer this Toro, I do like this one very much. It's a perpetual calendar, right? GMT, perpetual, dual time function. It's not that much function in there, but it certainly looks cool. Now the Sonata Streamline. Uh, they had a Sonata that wasn't a Sonata Streamline, it was just a regular Sonata and it had hands, sort of their uh, the way, well, what introduced me to Ulysses Nardan, these specific hands that we'll see later. I love those hands. Uh, even here in this catalog, they don't have the, the first Sonata, I believe it was the first one, with those special hands, and that looked absolutely stunning. The Sonata movement is wonderful. It's, it's innovative, it's crazy, it's a countdown chronograph with a cathedral gong. And that's, as you probably can guess, I love that. Dual time is, uh, in my opinion, meh. Doesn't know whether it wants to be too classy or too uh, bubbly with the date bubble. But this one, this dial looks quite nice. We continue through this, ooh, the executive. So this is, uh, a bit of foreshadowing for what will come later. You'll see that in the next video. We come to what everyone's been waiting for. The exceptional collection and, of course, the Freak. I mean, there's not much else to say. The Freak, the Freak, the Freak. This is one of the few crazy, well, this isn't really a crazy escapement, but a crazy uh, movement design watch that I absolutely adore. It's clean, it's simple, and you know what? It's actually quite easy to read. You have the minutes and the hours, and it's quite prominent there, actually. Which is unusual for these watches. Of course, it's 10.10, the time is 10.10. I even can understand and enjoy the bezel around the watch. With its, in other watches, I'd say it's a bit too much detail, see the scallopness of some of the previous ones that I'm not a huge fan of, but this is nice. Freak Phantom is slightly different, you can see the finishing here, it's not too bad finishing, of course you don't buy this watch for the finishing, but the finishing is there. But wait, that's it? Oh, the Freak Phantom has a more crazy escapement with a dual escapement. You can just about see it there, a dual escape wheel. I'm pretty sure that is more frictionless or something like that. Anyway, The Stranger is an absolutely beautiful watch. Uh, there's not much to say about this. It's a uh, well, I'm gonna talk about it, of course. Not much to say about it. Yeah, there's too much to say about it. Should have said that. 
This Stranger, Strangers in the Night, I love that song. Uh, the way Sinatra sings it. Uh, it is a, a musical box on a watch. And I've actually heard one of these sort of musical boxes in a uh, watch with the with with some Breguet watch. I forgot what it was called. Played some Bach. But unfortunately that you couldn't see the mechanism because it was under the dial. Here, I just love what they did with the uh, sort of sort of these bridges being the gongs. I mean, I'm calling them bridges, they're not bridges, but the gongs are pretty beautiful here. Skeleton Torbion is a skeleton Torbion, has nice blue hands. Imperial Blue is uh, probably a mini repeater or something like that. Ah, Sonnery Westminster. So Westminster Chime, I love Westminster Chimes. The Westminster Chime is when the watch goes da 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 for the quarter hours depending on how many, up to three, it does, uh, up to three of those, uh, up to th up to all three of the da 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 sort of sections. Now we get to the royal blue, which is this, of course, it has diamonds around there, and I can appreciate the sapphires probably around the bezel. I like the case, the case is quite nice. Uh, perhaps not there, the bezel is a little too thick, but here it, well, even there it works. Here, the case works. I love the sapphire plate. I adore those hands. That is what I want on this Sonata. That's, uh, yeah, those hands. That introduced me to uh, this company and they're quite nice. Going forward, here in the exceptional collection, we have more and more of these artsy watches. The art of watchmaking watches. A jazz minute repeater with, I'm pretty sure these are automatons on there. Yeah, that's a beautiful watch. Even if they weren't automatons, that would be just beautiful. Alexander the Great is also a beautiful watch. Those might be automatons, I'm not sure, but these, uh, these carvings, the engravings, this, the, what's it called somewhere here? Uh, Champlevert, yeah, on this Carnival of Venice, Carnival of Venice, I don't know. This is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We continue through this, and Hour Strike Tiger, and Moonstruck. Some, not a huge fan of the design, but that's a pretty nice micro painting. And here we have a trilogy set, limited edition. Who? Uh, three in one set. You get three watches in this set. Uh, I don't know who could afford three watches of this, but there's sort of an astrolab with all kinds of complications. These are astronomy complications, and I absolutely love them. I'm into, well, not really astronomy as much as astrophotography, but astronomy too. I love it when uh, watches have these kinds of complications. One of my favorite complications is a sunrise sunset indicator that not many companies do. But moving on, we have another, another final set. Yes, this is the classical collection. These watches are mainly all classic movements. There's not too many complications in here, but they have some beautiful finishing. See, enamel cloisonne, just look at it. It's, I, I, it's art. This is art. This is when I say watchmaking is one of the few industries where art is still there. Well, saying that, of course, you have three watches that are this art and then the rest are just some classic watches. And after that, the ladies. So I guess this isn't the end of the catalog. We have some ending, uh, some ladies watches. I do quite like that ruby uh, version of the of the well the royal blue royal pink I think it's called where is it oh a bunch of executives here some other ones yeah see yeah that's uh, that's interesting maybe a bit too much on that bracelet but here here in the classical lady so I guess that's not the end of the classical line. 
because we have, instead of being in the classical collection, we have this in the ladies' collection. This is classical lady. The peacock and the, what is that, a hummingbird or something. Again, this is art. Perhaps not as much enameling and engraving as the previous, but hey, jewelry is still art to an extent. And we finish with a bit of chronology, which is a, well, a timeline of everything that happened in, oh, and some nice photos of some sh sailing ships or something, of a uh, timeline of what happened in Ulysses and Ardennes. And I don't mind that this timeline is at the end because you did get that preview at the beginning. And this is quite a few pages that perhaps if it was at the beginning, it would be a bit too much. You finish off with a picture of their facilities, that blue uh, paper card thingy at the end, and the nice hardcover. Uh, I really do like Ulysses and Ardan. I think they stick to their roots, stick to what they're supposed to do, but they're not afraid of doing something new, but they don't paint their classic stuff with the new stuff. So they don't so they have sort of these both sides. They have the old stuff and the new stuff, which I respect. And I love the new stuff and I love the old stuff. But I understand if somebody doesn't like the new stuff, they might like the old stuff. If they don't like the old stuff, they might like the new stuff. I think it's a great thing to be able... I think it's a great thing for a company to go forward in technology and keep up with the times. In fact, Ulysses Nardin sort of made the times. But not offend your classic audience. I think it's a great strategy to do and I really love it when companies do that. There really is something for everyone. Now, I think Ulysses Nardin is quite unique, well, maybe not completely unique, but I do think that they're quite unique with their marine watches, having this sort of new category of watches. You have pilot's watches, diver watches, field watches, marine watches, yeah. Thing that's quite nice. And the focus on this is not really on finishing. Ulysses Nardin doesn't focus on watch finishing as can be seen by the lack of movement photos, but the close-up photos of the Freak show that they do have nice finishing and I would be pleased with the finishing. Of course, you don't buy a Freak for the finishing, you buy the Freak for being a Freak. So in conclusion, Ulysses Nardin is a company that has stuck to its roots, but also created a new segment of watches that have some crazy mechanisms. The catalog is very well made and it's a shame that they don't make them anymore. Please bring them back. Now I'm not sure about calling the freak the freak, because in this day and age, some might even call the design conservative. Thanks for watching the video to the end. If you liked it, please subscribe and like the video. Perhaps consider supporting me on Patreon. Any support would be greatly appreciated. I will be coming out with catalog collectors once a week for the foreseeable future. Of course, until I run out of catalogs. We'll see what happens then. See you in the next one.